be obsessed or be average? Hello, champions. Welcome to another episode of Champion Reads, the the book club and the podcast where we talk about best-selling books by best-selling authors and the principles that are in there. My name is William Blake. I am also joined today by Mr. Ian Sturmer. And today we have a wonderful book that we're going to jump into. One of my personal favorites, just because it's one of the first ones I started out with, Be Obsessed or Be Average by Grant Cardone. This it was one of my first books that I jumped into. And it was funny because I, I listened to it on Audible. I was signed into a friend's account because I had no clue what it was back then. And he's like, hey, why don't you, uh, I'll sign you into my account, listen to some books. And if you like it, you can get Audible on your own account. Be Obsessed or Be Average was one of those books. So I started listening to it and I just fell in love with the principle of just being obsessed with the things that you want and the things that you really are obsessed about but might hide behind fear, judgment of others, and everything in between, right? And then I realized that as I was watching YouTube videos and I was getting introduced to Grant Cardone, that it was that dude who was straddling his airplane on the book cover of Be Obsessed to Be Average, that that was Grant. And connecting those two, it was just like a wonderful thing, thing here, wonderful guy here, and it mixed it to being like, wow. What a what an impactful thing. So I'm glad that we're able to have this chance to jump into the book. Ian, I know beforehand, <laughs> even before we hit record, yeah. we started talking about like we started having a good discussion and we're like, no, we got to stop before we we uh, don't record this because this is just good stuff to talk about. So I'm going to turn it over to you to just like kind of summarize and bring up what we're talking about. And then let's just have a good talk about it. Yeah, well, I thought we we already went over all the good ideas before, so I don't know if we're done now. Um, yeah, we're done. But, all right, yeah. champions, we'll see you on the next episode. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so as I started reading this book, I got thinking that it really is just, you know, the, the go big or go home. Go out and do things. And that's something that's been hitting me a lot lately because um, I'm an idea person and a planner. I love to plan everything out. And, you know, with a podcast, okay, well, let me figure out the room I'm going to be in. Let me get my mic. Let me figure out the camera I'm going to use. Let me find the software. And then six months later, I haven't done a podcast yet because um, it's all the planning. And um, this really is, you know, go out and do it. And when I, when I look at this, there's kind of two sides to being successful. There's motivation and then there's accomplishing things. And obviously, we have to be motivated to do something. And that's a huge thing. And I work on that because I don't get myself motivated as much as I should, which is why it's fun to listen to Grant Cardone because he's a very motivated speaker, um, especially on Audible at two times the speed. He sounds even more animated then. <laughs> um, so sometimes that makes a difference too. But I was going to say, okay, motivation is entirely about how you feel about something. What you're doing is irrelevant. And uh, just a quick summary of an example I use for that. If, if you need to walk 50 miles, um, if somebody is going to pay you five bucks to walk 50 miles or, you know, a friend wants you to walk there to help them move furniture and you're just not happy about it. Um, but if you have a loved one that needs medicine and the only way to get it is for you to walk that 50 miles, you're going to be out there running. You know, if it was my kids, I wouldn't even bother checking which shoes I'm having. The second I know I need to do that, I'm out the door. And there is no negative thought about, why do I have to walk this far? That motivation is going to make it a positive experience because I want that so much, regardless of what's actually happening. So when you're talking about motivation for something, it doesn't matter 
what the object is. It's all about how you feel about that action. Now, in Grant Cardone, in this book, he's kind of talking about, you just need to go and do something. It doesn't matter what your motivation is. You need to accomplish it. It needs to be done. And my little analogy I use for that is, um, you know, it doesn't matter your feelings, it just matters the facts. I think that's a, a right wing uh, radio show guy's slogan. <laughs> but yeah. uh, if you take a brick and drop it on your toe, it's going to hurt. It doesn't matter if you think positive thoughts when you do it. It doesn't matter if you just helped a little old lady across the street or if you just robbed a bank. When you drop the brick on your toe, it's going to hurt exactly the same no matter what. The motivation behind it doesn't matter. The circumstances don't matter. All that matters is the action. And that's where, where Grant Cardone takes off with this. You just need to go and do it and go all in. Um, forget why you're motivated. Forget getting in the right headspace to do it. Forget debating pros and cons. Just Just do it. Okay, another slogan from a someone we'd love to have as a corporate sponsor here, but we don't yet. So I can't say their name, right? <laughs> the shoe company, <laughs> just do it. <laughs> um, so that was kind of my, my beginning point here is the idea of. Oh, looked like we lost Ian for a second. Um, but what he says is right. Like when it comes to motivation, an idea popped in my head that the difference, be, there's a difference between motivation and discipline which is the motivation part is always going to be temporary. And it's always something that you need every day where discipline, it's a habit that you create that's going to last you your lifetime. I think of it as uh, kind of like, I, I don't, I, insulin wouldn't be a good thing, but maybe just like drugs in general, like pharmaceutical drugs that you take to try to fix something. Oh, not Those the are, fun one. <laughs> no, not the, not the fun one. Uh, those are pretty temporary. Like they don't permanently fix the problem. They're just there to be able to to knock off the symptoms and to get you to to feel better, to be able to do stuff. But they but if you stop taking them, they don't last long. Instead, on the other side, if you were to, uh, for an instance of like, I can't remember. I think of it off the top of my head. But be able to have that thing of the the this, goodness dyslexia is coming. <laughs> Big breath of discipline, then it's a more permanent change than, than keeping motivation. So when it comes to needing to get things done, I think you're right when it comes to, it doesn't matter what you feel emotionally, you kind of just got to get the stuff done. And so there's two ways you can go about it. You can one, motivate yourself every day through whatever method to be able to get what you need to done. Or you can learn to do the hard stuff when not motivated which is how most people become successful. Yeah, and I think that's that's what it is. You've got to just do something. And um, you know, one of my rules of life is the things that happen today are going to happen. Most of those are out of my control. What I can control is how I feel about it. So if I have a task that I don't like that I have to do in the day, I have to do that task no matter what. But I can either be miserable while I do it, or I can be happy while I do it. That's within my control. And what I what I kind of get from Grant Cardone, especially at the beginning of this book, is it doesn't matter if you're happy about it or not. It doesn't matter, you know, you can't wait to get discipline. You can't wait to build a habit. You can't wait to get all of the stars aligned correctly for your idea to take off. You've got to just dig in. And, you know, in the end, I think doing the work is more important than any other aspect of it. <clears throat> you know, we're in this personal development space. We love to talk about motivation and time blocking and pattern interrupts and all of these technical terms to, to get our mind in the right way and our mindset and all of those things. It doesn't do any good until you go out and actually do it. Um, you know, until you stick the shovel in the dirt, there's not going to be a hole. It doesn't matter how motivated you get and how much planning and discipline and diagrams you make until you go out there and start actually working, nothing's going to happen. So let just that 
I get this raw, unbridled passion coming from Grant that just go for it, do everything, um, dive into it. And, you know, obviously there's some strategy, there's planning, there's, you know, learning specialized knowledge and those kind of things. But those will all come as you're working on it. But if you don't start working on it, nothing is going to happen. It doesn't matter. Um, the best ideas, you know, who's the first person to invent a helicopter? Well, we say Leonardo da Vinci, uh, but he never built one, so it doesn't really count. <laughs> and who knows how many other people we just don't have the papers from or never wrote down the papers. And uh, no matter how brilliant they were, it, it's useless. They're useless, <laughs> not to be rude. <laughs> Um, if they didn't do it, it doesn't count. So just get excited. Go do it. Don't hold back. That reminds me of something that I heard from Alex Hermosi the other day. It's about the principle of just doing it even when it's hard. Doing it when you're not motivated. Uh, because I think that we expect that when we do the thing that we think we need to do and that we should do, that we're going to be as motivated as we were when we had the idea. And especially when it comes from other people like influencers and gurus, we feel like we're going to have that same fire under our butt motivational feeling that we had back then when we sit down in our chair and start doing what we need to do. But, most of the time, and I'll even go out on the edge of the branch and say all of the time, that's not how it happens. We don't feel this burst when we sit down and do something. But even though our emotions aren't maybe there, we still just got to do it. And I think there's a key principle there of people expect the motivation to come and then to do the thing. When in reality, you do the thing first. And then that's when the motivation comes. I think that's true. Yeah, you can't sit and wait until you feel like it. Okay, I enjoy sitting and waiting until I feel like it, but nothing happens. In here, yeah. Yeah, it's, you've got to have that, that motivation. Sometimes, you know, the world conspires to force you into something at a certain time where you have to do it. But to really achieve success, whether it's in business or whether it's, just you know, having a good relationship and family, you can't sit and wait until the right time. So you know, we're both married. If we sit and wait until our anniversary to buy our wife something or tell her that we love her, um, it, it's not going to work. We've got to be doing that all the time. Um, you can't wait until only. I mean, don't get me wrong. Do something special on special occasions, <laughs> but you've got to get out and do it right now. You've got to constantly be working on it. Um, don't wait. And I guess that's that's the end result. I keep saying, don't wait for the right time. Don't wait for something to happen. Be constantly working on it. And as you're doing that, that passion, that obsession is going to keep growing. You know, if you tell your wife you love her once a year, you're not likely to have a stronger and stronger relationship. If you tell her you love her every day, that's going to continue to grow. And it's going to continue to fuel that relationship, fuel that. Um, okay, I just said fuel a couple of times. So, you know, if you don't constantly put gas in your car, it's not going to work. It's got to always be there for, for So forget waiting, forget special occasions. Um, I'm almost going to say forget planning. Okay, as much as that's important and to be successful, you've got to have some discipline and planning and all that. But almost just do it first and then pivot, change, correct, grow and all that as you go along. But if you're waiting to be successful, it's not going to happen. Um, so I'm sorry, one last uh, one, I'll turn it over to you. Uh, I was talking to somebody once and I was in Utah at the time and I was saying, yeah, you can't just wait for your ship to come in. And I thought, yeah, because we're in Utah in the oceans a thousand miles away. So if you're waiting for your ship to come in, you're going to wait a long time because there's no ocean for a ship to be on right here. You've got to go to the ocean if you want to find that ship. 
then you got to start swimming out and find that ship and haul it back in and get it because it's not going to happen any other way. You're going to have to go and do it. You're going to have to get excited, get passionate, be obsessed. Then things can happen. Otherwise, the person who is obsessed is just going to pass you by. And it comes from... <laughs> I'm going to try to tap into my, my passion a little bit here to distinguish the difference between talking about it and really be passionate about it. So I'm trying to think of a topic that I'm very passionate about that hits me at my core. And what I'm probably going to say is the challenges that we go through and the darkness inside of us in a positive manner. So I can go out and if I was a speaker trying to motivate someone, I would say darkness and challenge, all of us have that in our life. But what we can do is that we can face the pain, go through it. And on the other side, that's where the light is. That's where our superpower is. And if we just take that little bit uh, of pain, little bit of darkness, then we can go through it and be able to come out on the other side. Right. That's a decent message. And I think if that was a video on TikTok, you put a little like music in the background and whatnot, that'd get a couple hundred views. But that's not like the obsession. That's not the passion that you get from people who are absolutely obsessed with their mission, absolutely obsessed with the principle. The the ones that get like the million views on TikToks, the, the ones that are paid speakers to be able to go out. See if you can tell the difference with this one as I try to as I try to like uh, <laughs> manually tap into this passion and, you know, I'm taking action on it. So that's that's why I could feel it, feel it building up right now. Yeah. OK, I'm ready. <laughs> Let's do this. <laughs> but when it comes to being in the darkness, when it comes to having that challenge, you just have to face it. You got to push through the pain because it hurts. It hurts. But you also know that in five years, that if you're still in the exact same place that you were today, that's going to hurt even more. And the people that you love, the people that you admire, and even yourself, they're all going to be disappointed that because you just didn't take a small step forward, because you didn't just face the pain and you just tried to avoid it as many directions as you can, that you're just going to be stuck in that darkness. And I don't want you to be stuck in there. Because darkness sucks, like I said. But as you face it and go through, I know you can do it. On the other side, there is light. There is love. There's inspiration. There is hope. On that other side, when you're sitting down in a dark room, your head's down and you're crying, you have your knees up, your arms are crossed, and you have no clue what to do, you can look up. And on the other side, you'll be able to see someone standing at the door. That person is the future you. You're able to take yourself, look up, and that person who has his hand out, looking at you in the darkness, says, I'm right here. Let's go. And you're able to stand up with courage, knowing that as you take the small step that you need today, through the pain, through the darkness, that you can get into the light that you desire. I could, goodness, I can go even further and deeper into that. But there's just such a difference between when it comes from the mind and when it comes from the heart. And you can tell that difference. Maybe the words change, maybe not. But it's that simple difference of when you speak from the heart and speak from a level of obsession and passion versus speaking from just your mind and what you experience from the knowledge of other people that you read in books and videos and such. And that difference is what makes the difference between I'm going to do this as a hobby and the difference of this is my life and I'm going to be the hero so that the pain I go through, other people don't have to go through it. Yeah. Love that. And yeah, again, that difference um, in really caring about what you're doing. Um, you can see that we've all been to, you know, I've been to a restaurant, just a little mom and pop restaurant, and you get somebody who's just there to pay the bills, and you get somebody who is, just loves their business. And you can feel that going into it. You can feel that, that people 
enjoy what they're doing. They're passionate about it. And I want to be in those businesses. I want to businesses. I want to have one of those businesses <laughs> where you have that excitement. And uh, okay, this is kind of veering off a little bit, but as you were talking, it's, um, I kind of was reminded of, of another idea that hit me a little while ago. Kind of the difference, you know, you need some discipline in building, but you need the passion that's obsession. In it. And I was in the bathroom. Don't worry, I'm not going that way with it. <laughs> but I was looking at my counter <clears throat> and I had a, a bottle of deodorant, you know, a can of deodorant, and I had a bottle per, of cologne next to it. And I got thinking, okay, these are both scented to help me out through life. But one of them is to cover up a flaw in myself, to help prevent me from chasing people away because I stink. <laughs> it's it's made to to get rid of the stink so people are not offended. It's like the the baseline, the least I need to have in life is to not have people run out of the room because I smell bad. <laughs> the other one is to attract people to me. Not necessarily to mask a flaw or something, but to create some spark that makes people want to be closer to me. Okay, I, I don't know if I've experienced per, per perfume or cologne that really attracts people to me, but I feel a little more confident. But the point there is that one of them is just to mask a flaw. And that to me is kind of discipline. Let's get rid of the problems. Let's get you move more you're supposed to and all that. The other is to attract people to you, and that's the passion, that's the obsession. That's to go out and get it and accomplish things, not just do the bare minimum. And to me, that's that obsession. What is it that's going to make you for it? Allow that passion in your head, that, that deep-seated feelings, those desires to come out and manifest themselves rather than have to mask or cover up something that might offend somebody else just let the let the cologne shine through even if there's a smelly underarm someone there as well <laughs> but if there's a good part to it that's good um run with the good and i'm repeating myself so i'm going to stop in my analogy there because i think that's as far as i can take it anyways <laughs> um, <laughs> passion first and then deodorant later you're absolutely right. There is a level where you have to be passionate about what you're doing. And it doesn't necessarily have to be the thing that you do. It can be an aspect of what you're doing inside of it, right? You can go and jump into sales or the technology world or whatever and simply just love working hard. You love competition. You love making money, right? Like there, there's different ways that you can be passionate and obsessed without loving the job that you're doing. But at the same time, you know, that discipline part, it can be like, that's like you working a job that you hate. Yeah, you go every single day, you got to show up so you get paid so that you're able to provide for your life and everything, right? A lot, mo a lot of the times, I wish it wasn't the case, but a lot of the times most people don't go to their jobs and they're super excited to go there but they're disciplined where being like, yeah, I have to go. Then there's the other side of it to where you add a little passion into that, add a little something that comes from the inside, inside your heart from that. And it flips from, I have to do it to, I get to do it. And that's what I love about Grant's principle of being obsessed or be average. Cause we're not talking about simply, I'm just going to do this and it's going to suck the whole way. It's like, I'm going to do this because inside of me, I know this is a calling. This is something that I need to do. And as I just start on it, it's going to suck. It's going to be awesome. I'm going to be sad. I'm going to have joy. Like it's going to go in all different spectrums. But you're willing to go through the field of emotions because you are obsessed about that thing. And you just yeah. absolutely love it. It controls your thoughts deep inside. You just want it. You're willing to go through the emotions to have that. And I think that's pretty powerful. Yeah, I was, uh, just as you said that, I was reading in a, an interview uh, some time ago from Lance Armstrong, the cyclist. 
and it was he's talking about his retirement from the cycling world and they the person asked him what are you going to miss the most now that you're retired and he said the practice that wow it's not crossing the finish line it's not being on the cover of magazines it's not the press conferences with everyone cheering for him or the, the crowd roar of the crowds as he goes by it's the practice because he developed that passion for what he was doing and he knew that if he wanted to cross that line first for that finish line he had to be the hardest practicer he had to practice more than anyone else and that practice became the excitement because everything else that was going to come down later on down the road was encapsulated in that practice now i've tried to do that in some of my business i do some life insurance and i hate cold calling i hate warm calling even hot calling is not always my favorite but i love sitting down with somebody but when i pick up the phone that might be what it takes to get what i want in the end to help somebody out to give them something they need so if i can tell myself that picking up this phone is not something i hate but this might be the few seconds it takes to change somebody's life down the road then you get more excited about it let that passion come through that obsession for what you want in the end and let that bleed back to everything you're doing to get there and just learn to be obsessed with the mundane um, with the the little incremental time consuming piddly things that we all have to do in our jobs and let obsession of the end goal come back to those steps because that's what's going to get us there and the more excited we are about that the more we're going to be obsessed about everything the more joy we're going to have when we achieve those goals so be obsessed and i'm gonna i've been debating whether or not to say this example so i'm going to throw it out there because like we said before there's a little bit of you know discipline and planning and all that is super important but until you actually do something sometimes that raw passion is what's going to win so I know you and I both enjoy some comics and superheroes and all those things. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, years ago, and I have to see if I still have this comic, mm -hmm. there was a comic called What If that made situations that wouldn't normally happen, and they just kind of played, oh, what if this happened? And it was what if Wolverine fought Conan the Barbarian? And I don't remember the whole thing. There was some space alien time travel thing in it. But in the end, Conan won this battle because as much as Wolverine is this ferocious wild person, he was trained in Japan as a samurai. And I'm going into geekdom here um, where Conan had no training and just went on raw passion and instinct. And that's what allowed Conan to win because in the end, Wolverine fell back on training when he was hurting and he couldn't change and maneuver and the way he needed to. So in a sense, that raw passion is going to move you forward more than anything else. You've got to build the rest of the pieces around it. But if you don't have a raw obsession, passion in the beginning, in the core, it'll never come to successfulness. And I'll, I'll finish out my, my comment here with a, a quote from um, most famous motivational speaker of all whose name just slipped my mind your goal is to be the next tony robbins there we go um so tony robbins my favorite quote of his is um and i may get a little wrong it is impossible to amble langoriously towards excellence hmm. you can't just wander there you can't just sit behind plans you got it in the end get a passion that's the fuel that's going to move everything. And I'm using passion and obsession um, kind of synonymously there. But um, I think that works. Have a passion for what you're doing. Get excited about it. Whether it's jumping up and down or intense concentration, doesn't matter. Whatever it is, it's, it's obsession to you. And do it. So there's my final words as we hit the top of the half hour here. Yeah, and as, as, as we finish up, that's it's it's a powerful thing and i think one thing that we might need to carry into next episode 
uh, is the at kind of the average part of be obsessed or be average. Cause we went into the obsessed part, but it's that, it's that differential of, are you going to be obsessed? Or are you just going to be average, the average of what everyone else is doing? And I know that since we've been in like self-development industry and we've known a lot of people who are business owners and such, we kind of have our pools of people diluted to people who are growing and people who are obsessed um, as well as people who are just starting out. Right. But the average, if you were to look at everyone, average person does not do that. The average person doesn't try to achieve something bigger than themselves. The average person might set New Year's resolutions, but doesn't really change their life. And if they do, then they just be like, yeah, I hit the goal. And then they go back to the person that they were before. Right. That's that's what this this average thing is about. And what you brought up is so important of the need to just go and do more. <laughs> right. Go and be more like I. I, I have a secret goal of being in the next Tony Robbins. That came from me just admiring the guy and saying, like, I want to be like him because I think it'd be really cool to just help so many people on a bunch of different stages. But that being said, can I not already help a bunch of people where I'm at right now? Right. Mm -hmm. And that thought process and everything that goes with it is coming from like the obsession of just wanting to help more people. But for everyone out there who, and then the listeners on here who aren't doing that and who are just kind of sitting around, not doing anything, you got to be proactive. You got to be intentional. And I can't remember exactly the quote that you said, Ian, but you can't just basically sit there and let life happen to you. You got to go and make the life. So I can't remember uh, the quote now either, but <laughs> it, it had the word ambient in it. Oh. So yeah, it, it was a uh, yeah. You you just can't you just can't sit by and wait for things to happen. I think the average person thinks their way into trying to make their life different. The high achiever, the high performer, the champion, the hero, the obsessed individual, in the good way, are the ones who act themselves into making their life happen. And so as you move forward and as you continue to do it, our challenge for you today as we end the episode is to think about your goals and think of what is the next step that you need to take to get to where you need to go. And then do that next step. Because it's not just and about thinking, it's also about acting. Yeah, I say then do it. That's the, the key. <laughs> yeah, then do it. That's the important part. <laughs> Well, thank you, champions, for, for listening to this episode of Champion Reads. If you found inspiration in this episode, go ahead and subscribe to our podcast channel. We are across multiple podcast platforms, most of the popular ones. You can find our social links and everything that you can follow us on at mychampioncircle.com, where you can find our links as well as links to, to other things that we're doing as well. And until next time, champions, continue to act yourselves into not just thinking, but act yourselves into life that you're going to change because you're the champion in your life and it all starts with one step. So go ahead and take that one step. We'll see you on the next episode, champions. <laughs>